We often think that learning comes primarily from books or life experiences, but we forget about how much we can learn thanks to the people around us. I recently spoke with General Stanley McChrystal, who was the commander of the Joint Special Operations Command in the mid-2000s. He witnessed firsthand that we are most likely to persist in our efforts to learn and improve when we recognize that others are depending on us. In fact, he always tried to keep units together in Afghanistan so that the same soldiers could take on new and difficult environments together. When we hit roadblocks, it's the people around us that provide strength, support, and motivation as we learn how to proceed. His story struck a chord with me because they reminded me of my doctoral dissertation at Harvard. At the time, I was studying the Indian technology services company Wipro, collecting data on hundreds of projects and tens of thousands of employees. And what I found was that teams that had worked together before were dramatically more likely to deliver their projects on time, on budget, and with higher quality. In fact, prior experience together was related to a 30% decrease in budget deviation and a 19% decrease in defects. So why do we so often struggle to learn from and with the people around us? A big hurdle is what Stanford psychologist Lee Ross calls naive realism, a person's unshakable belief that he or she is somehow privy to the objective reality of a situation, a reality that others could see if only they were reasonable and rational. But when other people don't see things the way you do, they're not trying to be difficult. It's just that everyone views the world through the lens of their own knowledge, and everyone's knowledge is different. And when we channel our differences into productive conflict around a task, we can generate new and insightful ideas. How can we embrace others' perspectives and the learning opportunities that they present? I recommend four things. One, go out of your way to build relationships. Reaching out to others before you even need help is a great way to build a foundation for future interactions. And a little extra socialization is good for our emotional well-being. Professors Nicholas Epley and Juliana Schrader did a study showing that when people interacted with others during their commute, they were happier and at least as productive as those who kept to themselves. Two, find ways to work with the same people repeatedly. If your team stays consistent, you'll learn more about what each person knows and how they perform, gradually improving the group's trust and efficiency over time. If you can't keep the whole band together, not to worry. Studies show that even one familiar relationship on a team can make a difference. Three, change how you interact. Especially at work, we sometimes view interactions with coworkers as a competition, as each person tries to look smarter or better informed in front of the boss. So try adopting an inquiry perspective, one that focuses on listening to, learning from, and collaborating with the people around you. And lastly, a great way to learn from others is to take a page from the book of Seneca the Younger, who said, Docendus Discimus, by teaching we are learning. As an educator, I found time and time again that teaching forces us to better understand a topic ourselves. We iron out every little detail of what we know so that we can pass it along, which fortifies both our knowledge and our confidence in it. Also, our pupils may raise questions or offer thoughts that further enrich our understanding. Learning feels like a deeply personal thing, but at its best, it's a collective process. And never is that more clear than when we build relationships, repeat our interactions, adopt an inquiry approach, and teach the people around us.